told when training to become a hairdresser, one must practice at least a thousand times on a mannequin such as this one before they are allowed to touch a client's head. Well, that might sound crazy, but professionalism is what has turned this industry into a multi-billion shilling industry. Simply Namai, KTN, Saturday night. So Cynthia is laughing because she can't believe that we actually found a video of her reporting. But let me just do a very quick profile of who Cynthia is for those who do not know. Well, she is a, K a former KTN business anchor and reporter there. She was reporting. Um, she also won the Diageo Business Award for the best upcoming uh, reporter in Africa at that time. That was a, that's a big deal in the business uh, world. She was, she's also a writer for Forbes magazine and she's also quite impressively the managing director of Cynthia Nyamai Communications. So she has done quite a lot. I can't say she's very young. I was saying at a tender age, but I'm, I'm not sure about her age. <laughs> so let me not go there. Cynthia, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. So, I mean, just looking at that video, yeah. do you miss reporting and all these things? I, I, I miss reporting. Uh -huh. I miss uh, interacting, meeting people. Yes. And I remember that story. I actually did a story. I went to, I met this young lady who uh -huh. had a salon uh -huh. and I was very impressed uh -huh. um, that she had decided to take it to the next level. The next I level. think m at that time most of the celebrities used to go to Raquel's uh -huh. and they still do salon. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. that's, that's, that's the kind of story I used to do. I used to go out, find business people, yeah. entrepreneurs, yeah. hustlers. Yeah, hustlers. And do stories because they really used to inspire me. Uh -huh. And then a few years later, I decided to join them. So before we go to a few years later, you mentioned something to do with the next level. Yes. And I just want us to run another clip of mm -hmm. Cynthia taking reporting to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> just then, let's run that video. <laughs> well, that's a critical question that a lot of entrepreneurs must ask themselves before they start up their business. Some decide to go along with their training. Others, like Agnes, go along with their passion or their hobby. And just like her, you may find yourself laughing, or should I say, in this case, sewing all the way to the bank. Since then, am I KTN, Saturday Night Live. I could have actually, if I didn't know who you are, I would have thought that that's actually your day job. Actually, the lady behind me uh -huh. is uh, Big Ted's uh, mother. Okay. And I went to her shop, and again, she has, uh, she, she, for me, I used to work with, work with people who take small businesses yes. and take it to the next level, yes, value level. addition. Yes, yes. And she d what does a lot uh, when it comes to African print. Uh -huh. um, and a, a lot of her clothes are so beautiful. Right. And she sort of like promoted at those times. And even now, mm -hmm. for young people like us to wear vitengas right. and have them in a modern no, no, design. Nice, nice yes, way. Yes. All right, so uh, looking at the stories that you are doing, stories that, you know, are so personal, mm. do you miss telling those stories? Like, you know, like you, like you said earlier, you miss that, you know, one-on-one -on -one with people. Yes. Um, is it something that would uh, make you come back? to this industry? Um, I think it probably would be, uh, because of my traveling a lot, it would probably be difficult for mm -hmm. me to, to come back. Uh, but I still write uh, once in a while. Uh, one time I, I, I went to Forbes, I called Forbes, I said uh, I'd like to come to your office. I went to the office, I said I want to complain. I've only seen one Kenyan on the cover <laughs> of Forbes uh -huh, magazine. Uh -huh. one, I want to see more Kenyans. Yes. And if you want, I can write, I'll do it for free. Yes. So they said, okay, fine, write. So I remember I wrote my first story. They told me I uh, try and get for us Merali. Merali mm -hmm. rarely does interviews, mm -hmm. rarely talks about mm -hmm. even how much his worth. Mm -hmm. And for Forbes, you, you, you have to tell us how much you're worth. So yes. I went, I convinced him, and I told him the reason why I'm writing is because I want to inspire Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that Merali, when he started, mm -hmm. he had nothing. Mm -hmm. He worked very hard. Mm -hmm. And so anyone ca in Kenya can make it. The opportunities are there. Okay. And until today, I still write. Um, I had a story actually two weeks ago mm -hmm. in the Nation newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I was telling uh, Kenyans that, you know what, uh, don't just start your business in your estate. Uh, think about Kenya, think about Uganda, Tanzania, think about Nigeria. And I was talking about it because when we saw the president uh, come to Nigeria, I mean to Kenya, he came with uh, 500 government officials and businessmen mm -hmm. uh, because they could see the opportunities in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, and yet Kenyans, uh, a lot of Kenyans just want to sit in their small corner mm -hmm. and run their businesses here while... 
we have Africa. Yeah. Nigeria has a big population, bigger than the whole of East Africa. Okay. So that's an opportunity that people can look at. You can go to Uganda, Tanzania. It's certainly a bit easier to do business mm -hmm. there. We're a lot alike. We all speak Swahili. Yes, yes. yes. So all I right. was encouraging. And that's the kind of stories I do, mm -hmm. letting people, um, you know, get inspired and okay. see the opportunities out there. So I want, you to take, I want to take you a few years back because when you left KTN, so many people were left wondering, why is she leaving? Yes. At what point did you decide that, you know, you want to leave and you want to take on um, Synthing and My Communications? Mm. I think for me, I was very clear. I remember when I was doing my interview here at KTN, mm -hmm. um, and they asked me, what would you like to do? And I even wrote it, and I said, read my objective in the CV. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best reporter in Africa. Um, and then when I won the Diageo Award as the best upcoming uh, business reporter in Africa, I knew, yes, I've made it. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's, it's time for me to take up the next level. I okay. needed growth. Okay. Um, so I decided to take the risk and start my, my, my own business. Business. All right, so yes. in different circles, talking about the business that you started, mm -hmm. in different circles you're known as the fixer, um, part of which is as a result of you being part of the team that led to Muhammadu Buhari's win. Yes. How did you even start? How did you get to that point where you became part of this team? And it's not in Kenya, it's not even um, it's not Tanzania or you know Uganda, yeah. it's actually you know Nigeria. At yeah. what point and how did you get into the, uh, to get that opportunity? Really interesting. Uh, for me, my vision and purpose, the reason why God brought me into this earth is to bring Africa together. Mm -hmm. And I always talk about it, bringing Africa together through trade. Mm -hmm. So I, I started, I opened up in Nigeria and then I came to Kenya and I met with the Nigerian High Commissioner. And I told him, you know what, I really want to see more trade mm -hmm. between Kenya and Nigeria. Um, because I think we're the, like almost like the big brothers of Africa, mm -hmm. Kenya mm -hmm. and Nigeria. Nigeria is, is the biggest economy in Africa. Uh, and I must say that Kenya Kenya is, is, is developed mm -hmm. uh, in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, let me work for you. And then he told me at the moment we don't actually have a budget. I said, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Let me do it for free. For All free. I want to see is wow, Kenya okay. uh -huh. and, and, and the two countries uh, trade. Mm -hmm. So he told me, okay, fine. We have some investors coming in. Why don't you arrange their meetings? Um, and, I, and I did that. Uh, and one of the people who I met then uh, was a governor in, in, in Nigeria. And what I didn't realize actually is in Nigeria, governors are quite powerful. Mm -hmm. They're actually the most powerful politicians in Africa. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and later on he said, why don't you also work for us? So I went, I started working for them, and then I started do, doing work with APC. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went through the primaries uh, last year in Lagos um, to choose our presidential candidate. Uh, Buhari mm -hmm. uh, uh, won. Yes. Uh, we were very excited. In fact, a lot of people within the party said, why, we don't even need um, to go through the primaries. Yes. Let's just give this to Buhari, he said, no, let's be democratic. Okay. So when Lagos, we went through that process, and then after that, uh, we had the elections. And the thing I like about Nigeria is there's never one moment where people tell me, hang on, you're Kenyan, what uh -huh. are you doing yes, here? Yes, Why are you working? Yes, that's the thing I love about them. They have never, um, you know, asked me, where are you coming mm -hmm. from? For mm -hmm. them, Africa is one. Mm -hmm. um, and I have the same belief. I believe, um, you know, Africa is one. No boundaries, no, no borders. Uh, the borders that we have were just put in by the colonialists and we need to tear them mm -hmm, down mm -hmm. and just be one. I don't see why I need a visa mm -hmm. to go to South Africa exactly. or Nigeria yeah. because we are all one. And that's one thing I love about Nigeria. I've worked there for three years. Um, I have a, a contract. I'll be there for another five years. Really? Yes. I'll Someone be might say, why <laughs> isn't she doing all these wonderful things in Kenya? Why mm -hmm. choose to go to Nigeria? Kenya has the same equal opportunities. I also have, I still have my office here. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, in Kenya. Yeah, I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, just came, I just came in this morning <laughs> from Nigeria. <laughs> from Nigeria, okay, and I've uh -huh. been there for the last uh, one year. Uh -huh. uh, but I also, I also still have my office here in Kenya. Um, don't forget, also in the last election, I also did work uh, for TNA. Mm -hmm. um, and then also after this, I'm also going to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I'll be working with a presidential. Let me say the next president of Tanzania, January yes, Makamba. Yes, yes, yes. um, and so this is work that I'm doing throughout Africa. Okay. Um, and trying to, to, to work in different um, countries, trying to, to change leadership in uh -huh. Africa. Um, I can see very good leaders coming up in Africa. Uh -huh. um, leaders who believe in transparency. I have to say Buhari believes in, in transparency.
transparency. Mm -hmm. We're going to see changes. Um, we'll, see. we'll see changes. Yeah. And even here in Kenya, uh, the president, I'm very proud to have worked um, for Uhuru's team, and he's definitely going to change Kenya. And you You're can going see so political now. Ah, you can see <laughs> our politics now. And, and even uh -huh. in Tanzania. And you know, there's there's one thing that's happening in Africa. There's a revolution happening in Africa. A lot of people said you cannot get out a sitting president mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria, uh, but we saw you know Nigerians break that myth. Okay. Um, and so we're hoping to see that throughout Africa. That even here in Kenya, if our leaders don't perform, come the next election, uh, a lot of them will go home. We'll that go is home. something certainly that we're going to see throughout Africa. So okay, maybe finally before, I mean, right now there's so many young women who are looking at you and they're just wondering, okay, she looks very polished, you know, speaks very well, has all these opportunities. I mean, was it a case of everything was given to you? I mean, what advice can you give to young women and even young men who are looking up to you and they want to um, conquer some of the opportunities that you've also been able to? Mm. I have to say that uh, all the generation that we have right now is, is, is lucky and blessed to be born in Africa at this time. This is a time for Africa. The opportunities are there. If you look every, throughout the world, everyone wants to come do business mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, so the opportunities are there. It's, it's really up to you. And I tell people, if you're in Africa and you die anything less of a millionaire, mm -hmm. it's your fault. Blame <laughs> yourself because Blame the yourself. opportunities are there. And as, if you're coming from a country like Kenya, our education is very good. The opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, find out your purpose, why you're brought into this earth, and then go for it. And go for it. Yes. I like that. Well, yes. we'll continue this conversation in a short while. But for now, I want you to do what you used to do. <laughs> <laughs> and please, don't take my job. So if you can join me here. I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to take your job. Uh -uh, please. No, no, no. I think you're doing so well for yourself. <laughs> but then the other question mm -hmm. is, a few months ago, have a sit there. Thank you. Let me grill you some more. Mm -hmm. A few months ago, um, Valentine's Day, we got to hear about this <laughs> 2.4 million uh, <laughs> room in Kempinski, and your name yeah. came up as one of the people who had actually booked for that room for your loved one. <laughs> 2.4 million shillings. I mean, money ain't a thing to you, Cynthia. Not really. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the thing um, that I like is... Um, is um, when you're in the, the thing I like about you know running your own business is you're sort of independent uh -huh. um, and you have the freedom that's what I like you have the freedom financial to do, freedom you mean yes <laughs> to do what you like uh -huh. um, and I really enjoy spending on on the la on, on my loved ones uh, my family mm -hmm. uh, my niece um, and I really enjoy giving back uh -huh. um, so that's so what that's you giving back to your loved ones <laughs> so um, is he Kenyan or he, is he Nigerian <laughs> as I said before for me, there are no boundaries. <laughs> Africa is the one. So he's from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely makes it. So that's obviously he's not Kenyan. Sorry to our Kenyan. <laughs> we'll be taking to, talking to her about that. But um, mm -hmm. so there we go. So this is it. Yes. You've done this. But then let, let us see if you still can do it. Well, this is an interesting story that I've been uh, I've been watching for the last couple of weeks.